So tell me how it all got started. Well, I was born here in Israel, but then because my mother was Moroccan and my dad was Scottish, we ended up moving to England. And in England, that's where my mom wanted us to really focus in on what it meant to be Jewish. Okay. So being Jewish for her meant loving the state of Israel. It meant um, celebrating the Sabbath from time to time. It was sort of like a traditional Judaism. Yeah, like mine. Right. Then as I got older, I began to question whether that traditional Judaism actually made sense. I wanted to find out about God, but I decided that my mom wasn't the sort of source of all wisdom and truth. So I decided to go off and find books for myself. Now, most people have asked me, okay, so why didn't you just go straight to the Bible, you know, to the Tanakh, yeah. to the Old Testament? And the reality is that I'd kind of seen so much. My mom and dad made us watch so much. And at Passover, she made us watch the Ten Commandments, that yeah. old three and a half hour movie. And because I'd watched that, I thought to myself, well, why read the book if I've already seen the movie? Right. <laughs> so I said, forget that. I'm going to go and focus in on other stuff. So I went and got myself a copy of the Quran and I got, got myself a copy of the Bhagavad Gita, which is part of Hindu writings. Mm -hmm. And I began to read through those two books. Now, I'm about 18 years old at this point, and I've been reading through these two books, and I still haven't found out who God is. And so I decided at 18 years old, I was actually sitting in my bedroom with the Quran, and the thought, I had this thought, I was like, well, if God's real, I don't need to read through all these books, because if he's real, he should be able to just, you know, show up. So there in my room, I took the Quran, I put it down next to me, and I said, God, if you're real, show up. Mm. Now I was expecting, nothing to happen at all. Yeah. But at the end of my bed appears to me the face, the face of Jesus, right? And so I see this face and inside myself, I think, oh my goodness, that's Jesus. And I start freaking out. I think this couldn't possibly be Wait, real. wait, you weren't looking for him. No, no, no. You weren't being told about him. No. That you could maybe see him. Nope. But you knew it was him. I knew it was him. And I freaked out and I was just like, how can this possibly be true? Wow. How can this be real? And I'll admit that at the time, I may have been, you know, involved with certain substances. Yeah. So I was like, it's the drugs, it's something. It couldn't possibly be real. So I decided that it's all rubbish. I've just hallucinated something. Yeah. It, and so I put it away. And I decided to never tell anyone about it. Now I leave England at that point, after I made, when I finish high school, and I move to Israel. Now, there in Israel, I am, uh, go to Ulpan, right? So, which is Hebrew school. Okay, so, yeah. so this, it's, Ulpan is a school where you learn modern Hebrew. Modern Hebrew, exactly. So, I go to learn modern Hebrew, um, and there in my classroom is the most beautiful girl in the world, all right? So, Adele, my wife, I met her at my Hebrew class. She was there in my Hebrew class. And as we were falling in love, we start talking about God as well, because she comes from a family that was very new agey, okay. right? So every religion and every little philosophy all mixed up into one, right? That was a doubt. Yeah. So we start talking and talking, and eventually we get to the point where we realize all we do is talk, right? All it is is paka, 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 okay. but we never actually change anything. I mean, Adele was vegetarian, but there was no, there was no real difference in our lives for most of the other people that we knew. And so we like, you know, let's do something with our faith in God. And being Jewish and living here in Israel, we decide let's try Judaism. So we kind of have to discover it as we go. So I'm, we, we do Shabbat, we try kosher, we try festivals. And then I realize you don't go to synagogue once a week, you go to synagogue three times a day. And so I start going to synagogue and eventually we become religious, so religious that living in the beautiful city of Tel Aviv becomes a little too much for us. Yeah. And we move to Jerusalem. Wow. And that's when I end up going to the army. Now in the army, I serve in the head rabbinical court. So like the chaplains in America yeah. or in other places, Israel has rabbis and so we have a rabbinical court. And there in the rabbinical court, um, I meet a bunch of, you know, sort of orthodox guys, but I go home one day and Adele has invited this lady, her name's Judy, to come around for tea. So I'm sitting there with Judy and she tells us something that I didn't expect her to say. She says, you're well, Adele, have you ever read the Tanakh for yourselves? Now, we're orthodox Jews, okay? I've never had somebody ask me if I've read the Bible. And in fact, 
a lot of people who aren't Jewish will probably look at us and think to us, or think to themselves, well, of course they've read the Bible, they're Orthodox Jews. But the reality is we've never had. We've never just sat down and read through the Bible for ourselves. The Hebrew scriptures. Right. Yeah. We just we just sort of like read a bit and then lots of commentary. Okay. But no just reading. Which I think is typical, yes. Right. So we took on the challenge and decided to have a race. Right? Who's going to read through the Bible first? <laughs> I've, I've often told people, if you've never been able to read through the Bible, race somebody and you'll see how quickly <laughs> you finish the book. Yeah. I um, think i got to try that. Right. So we start racing through. And first thing we discover is there's a difference between um, the Judaism that we were using and, and the, Jude the Judaism that we were living and the Jewishness of the actual Bible. Okay. Right? There's, there's sort of like different rules. God just seems different. So we start to read through um, more and more and more. And eventually I get to, drum roll, Isaiah, Isaiah 53, 53. Right? <laughs> now, for me, that chapter was just sort of like, it was just annoying. Like I'd read through a lot of stuff. Yeah. I'd read through a lot of Isaiah, didn't understand anything. But that chapter bothered me. So I went off to Judy to get an explanation. Now, Judy is actually a Jewish believer in Jesus, but had never told me a You didn't thing. know it? No. Wow. Because she was a little afraid to tell us, because, you know, I had this big Orthodox beard. I had, you know, the hair, the head, Psyche. Yep. Adele was, you know, covered from head to toe. So that was kind of like the way that we were living. And so she was a little afraid of it. Yeah. So we decide, so I go to her house and I ask her, what's Isaiah 53? And she's been praying that God would tell her when to tell us about Jesus. So <laughs> he told you instead of her. Right. Directly. So I knock on that door and say, explain Isaiah 53. And for her, it's the sign she's been waiting for. Yeah. So she brings me in, sits me down, and starts to tell me about Jesus. Now I'm sitting there going, Oi, vey, you know, I can't possibly believe this. Yeah. Because while my connection to Judaism has changed, uh, my connection to my identity hasn't. Right. And Jesus and Jewish, no. Right. But as she's speaking, I realize, oh, I ask myself, why am I saying no? Because I've read through the Quran, I've read through the Gita, I've lived an Orthodox life, I've lived a secular life. Like, why am I saying no specifically to this? And I realize it's just because my mom told me. And I think to myself, well, that's not a good enough reason. Yep. So there in that room, a little frustrated and fighting with myself, I turned to God and I said, okay, I'm sick and tired of this. Just show me the truth. And the moment that I prayed that prayer, I had that same picture of the face of Jesus appear mm, before me wow. as it had when I was 18. And I knew that I knew that I knew that Jesus was real. Wow. So then I've got to go, I've got to go home to Adele. Right? So I thank Judy, I prayed this prayer with her. But I now need to go and tell my beautiful wife yeah. that he's the Messiah. How right. do I do that? Right. Right? So I start walking home. And about halfway home, I realize. I don't know how I'm going to do this. You know, I sort of have this freak out moment. I've got to have a plan. I've got to have a way of saying it. Yeah. And so I walk into the house and this was my plan. I burst into the bedroom where Adele was sitting reading. And I said, sweetheart, something terrible has happened. Jesus is the Messiah. And she looks up to me and I think she's going to scream, shout, something. She looks up to me and she goes, oh, okay. And I was like, which means okay, like I wanted like a reaction, something. But she was just like, look, calm down, we'll get a book. You know, and I'm, I, I wanted to have this whole conversation with her. She didn't want to like get into it. So I decided, okay, I'm going to go get a book. Now, you may be asking yourself at this moment, where does an Orthodox Jew serving in the head rabbinical corps of the Israeli army go to get himself a book about Jesus, the New Testament, right? Well, lo and behold, in my base, we had the book, we had the New Testament because soldiers swearing into the military yeah. have to hold the Bible, right? So all the Jewish soldiers hold the, the Tanakh and the right. Christian soldiers of which there are wow. some okay, I get, it. get a New Testament. Wow. So I stole a New Testament from the rabbinical corps of the Israeli army to give to Adele. Right. So I steal it, give it to her, she starts reading. So about a week later, um, I come home from the base and there is Adele sitting in our living room having just finished the book of Matthew and she has tears in her eyes. So I go in and I say, sweetheart, what's wrong? Why are you crying, right? She's in tears. And she looks up to me and says something that I'll never forget. She said, he was such a good man. 
why has no one ever told us this story before? And I realized that there we were in Jerusalem where Jesus walked and talked and lived and died and rose from, but we lived there and no one had heard the story. And at that moment, I kind of freaked out and I realized I've got to tell people. That's right. Because, and this is the key, it's not a, it's not a philosophy. Yeah. It's not just a cool thing to be part of. Jesus is actually real mm -hmm. and that actually makes a difference to everything. So that's how it happened. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. It touched my heart and uh, praise God for all of that. Yeah, so thank you for watching. If you like this kind of content, please make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we will produce more of it. Thank you and God bless you all.